Welcome back, everybody. Uh, another podcast episode here. We're going to do built off of a question that I got from Facebook. Um, it is a question that, you know, I, it, it came in. It was actually a while ago. It came in in August. So I apologize for the late reply. I'm going to be sending his name is Michael. I'm going to send him a message. To let him know that we recorded this. It's kind of a meaty question. There's a lot to it. Um, a lot of this stuff is stuff we've touched on already in other podcasts or, or talked about in other places, whether it be our YouTube, um, Facebook or Instagram platforms. But I thought it was a good one because, and I'm going to talk about it because the question comes up so repeatedly. It certainly is, um, on a lot of people's minds. It's not a unique question by any means. So I just thought it would help. Um, there is a little bit of a different spin that I can probably put on it each time um, because there's no way I can answer anything complete ever with one question and answer. So there's always like, there's always variables. So I'm going to get in, I'm going to get into it right away here. Um, so his name is Michael. He says, I want to start out by saying, I have your puppy and your foundation DVDs and I love them at less. And that's a point and it's not, and I didn't even think about it yet or think about it this way, but it is going to be a shameless plug. A lot of people don't realize that we have training videos. And so, um, I had several messages and just recently that said, I watch all your stuff on YouTube, had no idea you actually have training videos. And so we do, um, you know, we did them, we recorded the, we're actually going to be, we've got plans here this fall. We're going to be recording a new one on game recovery. We're going to actually uh, film some recoveries with some deer that we shoot um, with some of the dogs that we have in training. Bella will be a part of that series um, along with a couple of our other dogs. And, but we, re, we have, we have a series of videos that are out there that were produced by gun dog years ago. Uh, we partnered with them. We did a shed one, we did a game recovery one, and we did a puppy one. We also have our own uh, that we redid more recently. We have a foundation one and a puppy one. Um, the thing that the difference in them, I had one person ask me this week cause they have the gun dog puppy one. The gun dog puppy one is like, th I think it's about three hours long, but what we've, what we did was, you know, when we did gun dogs and it was fine at the time, but we had to do it a certain way because it had to fit within the model of gun dogs training videos. And so we did that. It wasn't necessarily the way I wanted to do it. Um, so we had to kind of compromise a little bit. Well, we decided to re basically refilm them the way I preferred to do it using different dogs and um, just a little bit different style and delivery. We, we incorporated a lot of footage from our workshops. And so it was very real life application to the chapters. It was just almost like supportive B-roll. So anyway, we re-recorded them. We took a puppy DVD and a f that, that used to cover a certain amount of content in three hours and we turned it into a three and a half hour long puppy that basically is very little puppy the pup the first you know few months that you bring your puppy home and then we have a foundation which is sequentially follows um that puppy video in a lot of in the the connections are made because of the flow of how i like to approach a training the training of a puppy and the raising of a young dog and so the foundation covers your foundation stuff he'll sit stay come and i call you are the primary things in there but that's three and a half hours long and then we also have a shed dvd that we redid and that's three three plus hours long so we just got into it a lot deeper with some of the ones that we that we re-recorded um but yes we have those available they're on our website so He's got them. He's watched them. I think the biggest change in our workshops here when we handle, when we do handlers workshops is folks have watched our videos prior to coming to the workshop and what a night and day difference that makes because the explanation of stuff isn't starting at ground zero when they come to the workshop. They've got such a good head start basically in the understanding of the concepts. And then we, literally are able to touch and feel their, their dogs at that time and, and make some next step stuff with it. So anyway, he said, he's got this foundation, he's got the puppy. So right away, I know he's got a general understanding of the route we're looking to take. He said, at less than five months, my Labrador puppy is well on his way to being a steady hunting friend. So, you know, young dog, five month old. I'll try to keep this short, LOL. Nobody ever keeps stuff short, but that's okay. He's doing great in some areas, but I'm having troubles in others. My main problem is in the crate. He has come a long way, but still scratches, whines, barks, and generally throws an all-out fit every morning. He knows he will not be released from his crate if there's any 
if there is anything more than silence. So upon hearing me, he will go silent. I'm not sure how to correct this. The issue since I'm not sure how to correct the issue since he already is silent by the time I get to the crate. I'm having I'm thinking any corrections made will confuse him since by the time I get there he's basically doing what I want. My second issue is whining. He will whine when in the cage and on place. I have tried saying no and making corrective noises but no to no avail. Eventually he will go quiet long enough that I feel comfortable releasing him but I would like to get away from him to quit whining altogether. Lastly, I would like to get your opinion on chew toys. Do you use them? Are they important for your tooth for tooth development and ease of pain while teething and how do I keep him from chewing everything else? Thank you for the great videos you produce and the advice and the confidence you continue to give all the first time trainers like myself. It's rewarding to see my pup started and where he's going. So there are several things in there. We're gonna back up and we're gonna start in the beginning. Um, he says his main problem is in the crate. He's come a long way, but he still scratches, whines, barks, generally throws an all out fit in the morning. Now I read that and unless I'm reading it wrong, I'm going, the dog needs to get out. That dog is telling you in the morning my dogs get antsy in the kennel too, especially if they have to go to the bathroom. At five months old, I am barely past the point of letting my dog, trusting my dog to not have an accident. I, up until about 12 weeks old, which is four, you know three months old, 12 weeks. So up until 12 weeks old, I don't know that they physically can really hold that back. Like they, they get in a habit where they, they get this they don't want to mess themselves, which is a habit that we try to form and make sure that they, you know, that's natural. We're just trying to foster that as best we can. Make it so that they don't ha get make a mess and have to be in it. But you're only at 20 weeks, so it's only been a couple months beyond that. I would say that if the dog is whining and fussing in the morning and throwing an all-out fit, get them out. And what I would say is my recommendation was get up earlier. So instead of it happening and then you're rewarding that because you're right you, you you don't want to reward a dog that throws a fit that's 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 one thing loud noisy dog in the kennel we don't want to give him a reward of any attention or give him the idea of you get out when you throw a fit but if you got to go to the bathroom we work really hard one of my number one priorities when i bring a puppy home is have them not poop and pee in my house and so we work very hard for them to understand hold it the best you can we understand you can't hold it much when you're little, so we try to help you with our routine and schedule to allow to understand what goes in, will come out, and when and how that happens so that we time it and schedule it and create structure so that you have all that stuff going on outside, not inside. Now, in the morning, the dog, if, if the dog slept through the night, he's gotta go. I mean, think about it. When you get up in the morning, you gotta go. Especially if you ate and drank last night, you gotta go. So you gotta get this dog out. So if the, I have found that dogs are like alarm clocks. They are the best alarm clock out there. They're creatures of habit. I watched, we watched a puppy, a friend of mine has, and we watched him for a week or so earlier this summer. And he told me, he said, I leave, I get up at 4.45 or something like that. And I leave around 5.15. And he said, so, Finley is the dog's name. He said, Finley's going to be up at 4.45. I said, okay, no problem. So at 4.45, I, I heard a little whimpering that first morning. I looked at my clock, it was 4.44. He was early. But like he, his habit, his routine was, that's the time he gets up to go to the bathroom. So, and, and that's what he's got to do first. So with you at home, set your alarm clock for 15 minutes early, get up, don't make a big noise, don't go make coffee, don't go do a bunch of stuff. Get up, go in, open the dog's crate, bring the dog out, let the dog go to the bathroom. And avoid the idea of him freaking out to get it need to go anyway. And I think, it, you know, I don't mind a dog that has to go telling me he's gotta go. So that part, that part, I think, um, that's how I would handle that in the morning. Now he says, he knows he will not be released from his crate if there's anything more than silence. So upon hearing me, he goes silent. Yeah, because he knows what's coming. He anticipates it. So that's a good thing, but it just, you got to get rid, you got to throw the, I, it's the timing part of it. You got to realize, you know what, this situation, go get the dog out and let him out. 
I don't need a dog that has to go to the bathroom to settle down before I let him out. I should beat him to that. So um, my second issue is whining. He will whine when, I, when he's in his cage or on place. Now, whining is a genetic thing. That's part of it. Um, whiners f create whiners. So selective breeding has done a good job of um, minimizing some whining. It also is very evident in a lot of dogs, and everybody knows it. Go in a duck blind with a dog. One way to really tell quickly if you're going to enjoy that hunt with the dog is, uh, you know, just close your eyes and listen. If you got a whiner, it can be a long morning in the blind. So uh, early on, I think you can curtail some whining with some sharp corrections early on. Ah, da, 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 that's enough. You know, just nip it in the bud when they're little puppies. Um, I had a dog that whined. Um, you know, I'm sure her mom and dad whined. Uh, this is really early on when I first started getting into some gun dog stuff. Um, the dogs I have right now, they'll whine a little bit, very little. Um, Taylor groans and moans a little bit. As she's getting older, she moans and groans a little bit more. I think it has to do with that more so. I mean, I moan and groan a lot more than I did 20 years ago too. So um, I do think that's part of it. But the whining part is can be genetic and you're not changing genetics in, by training. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, you, it says, you've tried saying no, making corrective noises. No, 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 no. Eventually he'll go quiet long enough that I feel comfortable releasing him. So here's my question is, I don't know that, you know, releasing him. So I'm, I'm confused. Does he whine on the plate? Let's say it's place training. You put him on the bed and he whines and whines and whines. And as soon as he's quiet, you let him off. I wouldn't let him off. I'd keep him on the bed because what I want to do is get the habit to be more often, the, the behavior more often quiet on the bed than whining on the bed. So yes, if, he, if it takes a while for him to settle down, ignore it. And as soon as he's done making a little whining fuss and he settles into the bed, I'm not so quick to take him off. Instead, I'm quick to remind him, good boy. And that's it. Don't stir him up. Don't get him riled up. Don't get him overexcited. Don't go over and tell him, oh, you're the best. Just good. Uh, we've experienced it with Bella here this morning. Bella was antsy. Bella got went out to the bathroom before we started recording podcast. I brought her in. I put her in place. She couldn't sit down. She couldn't lay down. She paced. She she was making a little bit of noises. And then all of a sudden, finally, she's she settled in. Now, I think earlier in this podcast, right when we started, you heard her. Mm -hmm. She's Now she's up again because Dad's talking about her. So she's spinning around right now. She's trying to get comfortable. And now she laid down again. She's a little antsy, too. But I'm not, just because she laid down right now, I'm not going over to release her and say, okay, now you can do whatever you want. Get that the majority of the time to start being the behavior that you want instead of the behavior you don't want. So if the dog takes a little, you got, now back up for a second, five month old puppy. You got a really, really young puppy. So if you can get the puppy to settle in and, and then it settles in and then it settles in and then it settles in and it starts to understand settling in isn't the worst thing and settling in doesn't mean change behavior now all of a sudden. Like we're gonna go do something different. It's the idea of the quiet, non-fussing time is bigger and longer than the uneasy fussing time when they first start. That's what we need to have. So don't be in such a quick hurry to release him is what your words were. Um, now, uh, lastly, I'd like to get your opinions on chew toys. Do you use them? Are they important for tooth development? How do I keep an ease of pain while teething and how do I keep them from chewing everything else? That's a very easy answer on all fronts. No, I don't use them. Chew toys are training tools. Chew toys form habits. Chew toys create chewers. The idea of using them to develop teeth or tooth development doesn't make any sense to me. They're not going to help develop any teeth. Nature takes care of that. The puppy teeth come out, the adult teeth come in, their mouths are sore, they're a little owly as you would be too, just like a baby. It's painful, it's it's sore. Yes, they would like to chew on stuff while they're teething because they want to try to, they're stressed out, they want to relieve that uncomfortableness. I give, If I have to, I'll give them some ice cubes 
and that helps numb it, but they won't confuse ice cubes with anything else. If we give them chew toys, they confuse chew toys with training dummies. They confuse chew toys with shoes. They confuse chew toys with stuff that they have potential access to other times, and they turn it turns into a habit. So no, I don't use them. Now, I know some people are just gonna, you're crazy, you gotta give them toys, you, gotta, you do you. I'm telling you what I do, and I'm telling you I've never had a dog rarely ever have a dog chew anything up in my house. Now there are a few spots that I can show you puppies have gotten away with stuff and chewed on things because for whatever reason, here's whose fault it was, not the puppies. It was my fault for not paying attention. I'm looking at a couch right now that has a little corner of it with a little hole in the leather because a, dog, a puppy chewed it. I don't remember what puppy it was, it was years ago. I mean this couch is old, it was a long time ago. It was not the puppy's fault. It was my fault for putting the bed next to the couch and not paying attention to it. If I had slid that bed a little bit further away so that the puppy couldn't reach the couch, guess what? The couch wouldn't have gotten chewed on. So the answer is, how do I keep them from, your question is, how do I keep them from chewing everything else? Keep them from getting at everything else. My dogs don't have free reign. They don't run around the house and have access to everything. If they can't get at it, they can't chew it. So you have two choices, pick your stuff up or don't allow the dog to get at it. It's simple, it's really simple. And if you do that in these formative months, these formative years, you create dogs that don't have the desire to chew. I give my dogs a chew, like, I, this is a little bit off subject, but um, supplement type stuff. I had a question the other day about supplements. Do you give your dogs any supplements? He's got an eight month old dog and he's thinking about giving his dog supplements. And I asked, how come? Like, is there some type of ailment that you're trying to give supplements for? Or, you know, what's the reasoning? That's the first question. Because I don't, because I don't have any, I really don't have any reason to. I will give our dogs, you've seen it on our Instagram and Facebook, I'll give our dogs um, uh, fish skins. Or when, I, when I smoke trout, I'll give them the skins. Um, they're rich in, in oils. Um, they've got good, oh, this omega. They, it's, it really helps them with their coat. And they love it and I feel good about giving it to them rather than throwing it out. So I do give them that. Um, that's just an extra little treat for them. But it's very rare that I do stuff like that. I've given, so from a supplement standpoint, no, I don't give anything. My wife used to give coconut oil. We feed a pretty good food. We feed um, American Natural Premium is what we've been feeding the last few years. And I have seen their coats look real good. I don't know that I have a necess the necessary uh, the need for anything in addition, but my wife, Steph, used to give the dogs coconut oil. It's like a big chunk, it comes, it's hard, and it looks like lard, kind of, but you give them, the, she used to give them coconut oil, and that helped their coats as well. So, you know, that maybe is a supplement, I guess. We didn't do it because of a health, you know, it's not like it's glucosamine or anything like that. Um, we don't, we, we, knock on wood, have not had a joint issue in ever with, with, with our dogs. So I'm real, real happy with that. Um, so I haven't had to do that. Now we do, we have started, and I start in the fall, giving them some energy boosts, uh, especially in the field. Um, there's a company called E3 K9, E3 Performance K9. Um, we've, we've used, they have a, a product called Protein Poppers, um, Roasted Tips, I think it's called, or Roasted Ends, Roasted Tips, I think. Uh, protein poppers and trail mix. Those are the three that I really like. They're small, like snacks, kind of. They're different parts and pieces. They're a ranch out of Kansas that pro that does uh, beef, and so they make these things. A lot of them are designed to be treats um, and chews. I, well, I don't use the chews, but we give them these treats. Well, that we got these chews. I tried these chews um, just to see. Oh, it's you know see how it would go with with a couple of our dogs. Um, my dogs don't even chew on them because they just don't even know what they are. I put them in their kennel and I come back an hour later and they're sitting there. Like they just don't even, they don't even eat them. They're, they're tendons and they're, they're these, they're, they're built to be a chew for a dog. My dogs don't chew them. It's because they don't think chewing is a be acceptable behavior. And that's not punishment. That saves a lot of frustration. So, um, so no, I don't do chews and how do I keep them from chewing stuff? control them. That's it. Keep them from chewing on stuff and don't form the habit in the first place. So that was a really good, I think it's a really good question Michael had. I think it's probably something that a lot of people are, have, have had, will have. Um, it's something that, you know, it's reiterating a point that I've made a lot of times before. 
but you know, if the question comes up, let's answer it. So, uh, I hope that helps Michael. I'm going to send you a, a message. Um, I, I appreciate you saying it's so rewarding to see where my pup has started and where he's going. I, my, our goal, it's no secret. Our goal is not to have people go, I really want to send my dog to you guys for training. That's not, that's just not how we function. That's not how we do things. Our goal is to try to help those who are interested in training their own, want to train their own, looking to build a better relationship with their dog. Um, you know, the DIY, the do it yourself or, um, we, our hope is that we're providing information that helps you. Um, and, and so, you know, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you taking it on. Um, and, and when you say it's rewarding to see where my pup started, where he's going, that's the key. I think that is the key. Uh, understanding that it's a slow road of progress with a lot of ups and downs. And as long as we understand that and are realistic with it, the, I, I talk about how the journey is better than the destination. Like the trip there, if you make it, it's up to you. You can make it a real pain in the neck or you can make it something that you enjoy. I enjoy the process of training the dogs way more than I do the end game, the end results. It's just, but, and by doing that, it's kind of like bear hunting. <laughs> this is a weird analogy, but it's kind of like bear hunting. So in Wisconsin here, we can't, we draw to where I'm going to hunt. 10 to 12 years before I can get a tag. So this year we ran bear baits. Ben helped me out with them. My nephew helped me out with them. We ran a couple bear baits in the area that I would draw a tag in a couple of years. And I, I, a buddy of mine messaged me and he goes, oh, you must have a tag this year. I see you're baiting bears. I said, no, I'm three years out, you know, two, three years out yet. Um, but I, I'd like to see what I'm getting on and I don't want to wait 12 years and then start digging into whether or not I'm going to be able to get some bears on camera. And so I said, so you, yeah, no, I, I'm a few years out. And one of the things that he said to me, and I didn't think about it this way until he told me it, but it really made sense because it's what was happening. He said, boy, not only do you get, you know, you're prepping for when you do draw a tag, but he said, now you enjoy the hunt for four years. If you draw a tag in three years, you get to enjoy the hunt the year you hunt but you also get to enjoy it these three years because all the work, and it's a hell of a lot of work. There were a lot of times where I said, why am I doing this? What a nightmare. Lugging these huge stumps and bait back in the mosquito infested, hot sweltering deer flies, just terrible. It was a, oh, it was a nightmare. But then when you check the camera and you get a picture of a big one and you get a picture of these two that are fighting, you get a picture of one that has an ear tag. Like I got all these, all these rewards and my nephew wore a shirt that said hard work pays off. And I laughed at him and I said, man, that shirt mean that shirt's right. Like it really is a lot to be said. Well, the idea of training the dog, if all the enjoyment you get out of it is the year you hunt that one in 12 years that you drew the tag, if you only got the enjoyment, there's nothing wrong with that, but I would rather enjoy it for multiple years leading up to it. And then you get, the, you know, you get a rug made, you get a mount done, you get whatever. And now I enjoy it for the years beyond it. So it's, it's the big picture process is as fun or more fun and more enjoyable. And in your words, so rewarding that that's why we do it. And so our hope is with these podcasts, with our YouTube, with all of our social stuff, with their videos, our training videos, all that stuff is to help you hopefully get more out of the process, enjoy it, get in, in, get more out of the dog. I, I really feel like our job is to get the most out of the dogs that we can. Um, that's always my goal. We'll never get it all, but the more we can get, the better for both them and us. So Good luck to you guys in your training. Keep going. Stay positive. Um, we will continue recording some of these. I've got a whole pile of them that we're digging out from under. Um, our hot egg season is in full effect. Is our hot egg brand of products, Licking Stick. We've got new products that we're launching there. So it's taking a ton of time away from some of this project-wise. But we did. We do have a new hire. Uh, starting next week, he's going to be coming out full time. He's going to be another m working with us in our marketing department, which is made up of Ben and I. Um, so we're going to we are expanding there a little bit. Um, it's going to give us give us some opportunity to do a few more things. Um, but as always, I just appreciate your support. 
I appreciate what you guys are doing for us. Um, keep in mind, I, you know, a lot of lot of responding respo responding back and forth via different different ways, be it be it DMs and text messages and emails and all the phone calls and all this stuff. There's so many different ways to communicate right now, but keep in mind that the the idea of we are a really small company and there are a lot of little companies out there like us and support from people like you is the difference. Like that is the reason why little companies like us keep doing it. And so we thank you for it. We appreciate it greatly. Um, and we'll continue to do these. Stay positive and enjoy the, the these next couple of weeks and months. If you're a hunter, uh, it, we are right on the, we, well, we're into it. The, it's begun. And we have, we have several weeks of these cherished fleeting moments. I'm already panicking about it because I'm going, man, we're already into October or close to it anyway. So good luck to you guys. Keep, keep positive and keep moving forward.